when we go to the zoo, we can, in a way, look past the bars and only see the animals, whereas IO never lets us look past the bars or the barriers or the spikes or any of the other uh, dividers that separate us from the animals. We always see the animal plus the cage. That was very important to him, and that was the point from which he thought we might begin to ask some fundamental questions. This is Molly Warnock for Art Forum Interpretations, and today I will be talking about Gilles Ayo's depictions of rhinoceroses in zoo enclosures. Ayo is a very distinctive painter within the post-war French context, at a time when many other artists were turning towards abstraction or abandoning painting altogether. He focused on animals within zoos. This is his sole subject throughout the 1960s and 70s. Something that I think is very important about Ayo's depictions of animals is that we always feel that these are specific animals that he has in fact observed. They're never general representations of his species, but in fact, he lavishes great attention on the particularities of each individual animal that he depicts. And I think a wonderful example of this is a 1979 painting entitled Rhinoceros in the Singular, although it in fact depicts two rhinoceroses side by side, separated by a row of bars. Ayo is always showing us solitary animals, but in some ways they never feel more solitary than when separated by a barrier. In my current article for the February issue of Art Forum, I discuss three different paintings of rhinoceroses, and I think each one allows us to grasp different aspects of Ayo's project. The earliest work which I discuss, which is in fact the concluding image in my essay, is a painting from 1966 of a rhinoceros viewed from behind. It's one of many pictures that we know was based on a black and white photograph that Ayo himself took in a particular zoo. But as was frequently the case with his work based on photographic sources, he significantly changed the composition in terms of its cropping, bringing us much closer to this animal and making us feel a relationship of much greater bodily implication in the scene that we're seeing. It's precisely because we read these as individual animals living individuated animal lives, I think, that we become sensitive to another aspect of these depictions. Ayo, when he talked about animals, spoke about a kind of ambiguity. On the one hand, as he noted, animals are the most physical thing one can imagine. But at the same time, in looking at an animal, we immediately sense something else, something that does not show something that he was happy to call metaphysical, and which in my article I describe as a kind of mindedness. These are animals that exist, and they are also, for Ayo, animals that think. For me, the paradigmatic expression of this in the Pompidou retrospective is a 1972 painting of a rhinoceros, as always depicted within an enclosure, shown within the unnatural habitat that human beings have fabricated for it, Gazing at a kind of blind window or a screen, it's a little bit hard to make out architecturally, spackled with some purple substance that I think is a kind of metonym of painting. And we really have a sense that this rhinoceros is gazing intently at this painting-like object. I don't want to say that we have a sense of the rhinoceros as possessed of an interiority that feels too psychological. But I would want to say that Ayo is keenly interested in modes of attention that perhaps differ from human ways of knowing. And I think of this really as an investigation of shapes of mind other than the human mind, which is of course very different from seeing animals as mere machines or as inert objects. I think Ayo's depictions of animal life really have to be understood in the context of his polemics against Marceau Duchamp in the early and mid-1960s in particular. I am perhaps most interested in the critique of Marceau Duchamp as somebody who, in Ayo's telling, really wanted us to set aside our animal nature. He's thinking in particular of a very famous quote in which Marceau Duchamp talks about art as the only activity that allows human beings to show themselves as true individuals and to go beyond the animal stage. Whereas I see Ayo as a painter who wanted to remind us at every turn of his practice of all that we in fact share with our animal others. And what we share, I think, is finitude, 
exposure and animal vulnerability. And so I guess the question is, how do these paintings ask us to think about human subjectivity in relationship to animal others? It's clear that Io understands the human and the animal as in some sense distinct, although intimately related. And as Io said, when we're looking at a painting of an animal in a cage, it is not a human being in some sort of disguise, but the human being put the animal in the cage, and that's really the problem that we have to understand.